Hey everybody, it's Lucinda. You know, we're all devastated and overwhelmed by what's happening in Ukraine. And if you're feeling depressed and anxious and lost and down and fractured and disoriented and alone, then you know you're not alone. Um, fortunately or unfortunately, we are so connected as a world because of social media, the internet, television, you name it, that um, we, we are, you know, Ukraine's right next door, isn't it? I mean, you would like to think that, you know, you don't have to watch this, you, you don't really wanna see it all the time, and yet there's something that draws you in and makes you wanna see what's happening over there because it's so, first of all, it's so unbelievable. It's so unbelievable that it's so barbaric. I mean, that's the word I wanna use, that it's hard to believe that we live in a world where something like this could even happen. And, um, and it's hard to believe that anyone in this world would think that way. And yet you have this, this person over there for, for whatever reason, and there's a lot of different opinions on that one, right? Um, and none of them make any sense. But we, we have people who are, you know, they have just negative evil energy. And um, for whatever reason, you know, they're destroying people. And it, it's so hard. We're watching families drag their elderly parents, you know, down the street to catch the train. And you're watching mothers and fathers. I think it's, uh, I know you've seen it all. And I don't want to remind you, but, you know, young couples running into a, a hospital underground to take their baby who's been shot to death um, to a hospital and he's already gone. And, um, elderly women standing there just crying their eyes out. And it's really, really, really horrific. And, and so tonight, what I wanted to do is find a way to, you guys are all so beautiful. I want to say that. And I'm so honored to be able to be here. And what I'm really grateful for is that I have these beautiful souls on my show and um, I want you all to come together in prayer and, and just God energy tonight. And I wanna send that over to Ukraine and, um, and just try to, because there is power in numbers. And I think if we can just come together with our hearts and our, our higher selves and our universal energy, it, it's okay, by the way, to, to feel completely overwhelmed by this. It's okay to feel heartbroken. It's okay to, it's funny because, you know, me, I do my research and, um, and I, I want to start off by saying, by the way, I'm Lucinda Bassett and I'm glad that you're here and I write books on anxiety and depression. And my mission in life is just to help people help themselves. And I want people to feel better. And that's the only reason I do this. And you've got to have a safe place to land. And I want to be your safe place to land. I want to be the place you can come to and, and cry or, or laugh or, or share. And, and hopefully you go away from this night with some good information and, and your heart feels a little more open to God and the universe. And, you know, I don't care what, whether you're Christian or you're Mormon or you're Jewish, I don't care. Uh, what I do believe in is a higher power. And I do believe that I am divinely driven to be here tonight and to be here with you guys. And, and that's why I'm here. And I want to give a, a special loving kind prayer to Ray, who's on here tonight with all of us. He just lost his dad today. I'm so sorry to hear about that. And um, so, so sorry for the loss of your father. And all of our prayers are with all of you. And so please know that. And uh, I, I think the idea is, yes, thank you so much. Um, that today, I, I, or tonight, you know, I want all of you to understand that you are part of the, we are all one, okay? And, and the world has gotten so small. And so whatever is happening over there is, 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 is affecting all of us. And, you know, you could say, oh, you know, um, I have a, a, a relative in Ukraine and I'm really worried. And I would be scared to death if any of my relatives were in U Ukraine. And, and if, if you could just for a moment, and I know we've all done this, sit and think, can you imagine if someone were coming into the United States of America and, and bombing us and, and, and killing our children and bombing newborns and 
and the children's hospitals and, 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 and we're running down the street exhausted and you're, you're running toward what? You're running to get on a train that's overcrowded and, and you're running your be- baby to the hospital that's already, it's already overcrowded and, and they're bombing outside the, I can't even imagine. And, and, and these poor people, they're devastated and, and there's, and it's nonsensical. I mean, there's no reason for it. And then on top of all of that, you know, when they land on in some fabulous country, Poland, someone that's bringing them in, they've got to start all over again. They, maybe they've lost family members. They have no money. Their home is gone. All their belongings. It's, it's beyond imaginable. I mean, it, you can't even get your head around it. And, and I'm here to tell you that I'm depressed about it and I'm anxious about it. And I'm, um, I'm heart sick and I'm heartbroken. And, 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 and if you're not, then there's something wrong. So if you feel that way and you wonder why you want to cry and you're overwhelmed and you don't want to watch TV, but you feel like you have to, then you're just a normal loving person who really gives a shit. And I wanted to put a couple of, I'm not, I'm not going to put them up on the screen, but I'm going to give you, we all want to do something short of, you know, getting over there because there's nothing you can do over there. However, you see grandfathers and grandmothers, these people getting, making homemade bombs and getting out guns. It's, it's just, it's all so surreal. But if, if you want to do something, I can tell you two organizations and Murray helped me find these organizations that you can trust if you want to donate. One of course is Red Cross and it's just redcross, all one word, dot org. And the other one is UNICEF, USA, U-N-I-C-E-F, USA, dot org. And this money goes to feed people and help the refugees and, and, and the hospitals. And, and it's, it goes toward trying to help these people survive. And we don't know. And I think part of the problem, and I can repeat those later, but part of what we're all struggling with is, you know, we live in a democracy and we live in a free country. And, and so did they, by the way, I mean, they're, they lived in a free country. They were, I mean, you know, they, they were very much, I think that's the other thing that's so hard is we look at these people and they look like us and they, they're living like we live and someone took away their freedom and, and their babies, they're screaming and running and they're running, they're running, they're running just to save their babies and their, and their dogs and their elderly mothers. And it's just absolutely horrific. It's, you know, I, I you know me, I, I do my homework. Um, this is one of the, I would say most violent um, things that we've seen happening in the world in, in many, many years. Um, it's, it's, it, it really affects us because we have no sense, we have no sense of control over our, over what we can do to help. And, and, and it is very close to home and we feel helpless to help them. And yet we're not because we can send, as I said, we can send, um, money into these two organizations and they're very legitimate. And so I just want to take a few moments and I want to say a prayer for Ukraine. And I would really like all of us just to sit back for a moment. And just breathe in. Breathe out. And you're breathing in courage and strength and belief in a higher power, belief that someone up there has to be watching out. It's, you know, it's so hard to believe in God or a higher power when this negative crap is happening because you want to say, where's God? Why would a, why would a, how, a higher being allow this? And then you go on these spiritual, I don't know, you know, Oh, ministries. And they're like, this is all, you know, hap- happening for a reason. And they, I don't know. I mean, I don't know what's happening. And I don't believe in, in all of that. I, I think that sometimes this higher power sits back and, and says, you have to solve this as a world. You know, the world needs to heal itself. It's kind of like the parents watching the children that are out there, you know, 
stealing cars or doing drugs or doing things we don't want them to do. And you want to jump in and say, I'll buy you a car and, and I'll send you to, you know, I'll buy you your own apartment and I'll do all of this for you. But that's not the answer. A teenager has to figure out what's going wrong, what they're doing wrong. And this isn't just about Russia. I think the picture, and I'm not God, and I'm certainly not a minister, and I'm certainly not, you know, the president of the United States, thank God. Um, but maybe the, the message really is that we've got to get our shit together as a planet and, a, and as a world. Like the world's no longer divided into, you know, nations and countries and, and ethnicities and religious beliefs and whether you're a Democrat or Republican, we are one and, and we have to learn how to live together and how to embrace peace and how to embrace, you know, letting each other be and helping each other be the best that we can be. And so I want to just say a prayer for Ukraine. And if you just will close your eyes for a minute and pray with me. Masters of light and angelic forces, we pray together as an energy source with our higher spiritual selves for the people of Ukraine, for all of those running, scared, suffering, afraid, that they will find comfort in the universe and a higher energy source that will come to them and protect them and bring them to safety. We pray for all of these world leaders for strength and wisdom and insight that will help guide them to their choices through some sense of a higher power of unity, of what's really right for the world. And we pray for the world. But in this moment of crisis, we can somehow reach out in solidarity to our brothers and our sisters and our families and our children in need and in fear. And may we walk in the spirit of our higher selves, because that's where this is going to have to land at some point with the world, so that peace and justice become our reality for the people of Ukraine and for the world. May they find solace and peace and comfort somewhere in all of that darkness and all of that fear. And may all of us find a way to reach out in some way, if only in prayer, and offer our energy, our help, and our hearts to them. Because that's what we need to do. So I thank you so much for that and for sharing your energy with me. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm here to give you um, some support. There, there's only so much we can do right now. Part, part of this that we struggle with is that we don't have any power. We have no power. You know, we, we can't control our government. We really don't have any say in much of that right now. Whether you're Democrat or Republican or nonpartisan or whatever you are, you know, we don't really know what's going on, do we? And there's a lot of people, you know, thinking there are different things going on. And I don't know what's right. I don't know what's wrong. I'm not in politics but I do know that what's happening is wrong and, and, it's, and it's very, very painful. And I wanna help you get your head around it and do what you can right now to keep you and your loved ones calm and safe because these are very trying times. And we've been through two years of COVID and that in itself was, you know, threatening and scary and, 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 and stressful. And now, you know, now look what we're struggling with. We're watching that terrible, torturous experience in Ukraine. And we're all sitting on bated breath wondering what's going to happen next. And of course, you know, you and I, if you're an anxious thinker, is what's the worst thing that could happen? Don't go there. Um, and so what can we do just as an independent person to help ourselves and our families stay calm and grounded so that we can do something, so that we can reach out, make a donation, make a phone call, um, do what you can 
you know, to, to just try to, to try to help. So the first thing I would encourage you to do is, is, is try to make a donation to unicefusa.org or the redcross.org because I know, I don't know how you feel, but everybody wants to do something. And those are two really strong, well-known organizations and they're doing a lot over there, okay? And then I want you to take a moment and, and take the next couple of steps. And if you have a pen, you might write this down. Uh, first of all, this is so hard, but I want you to avoid hunting for evidence <clears throat> that supports your worst fear. Now, I know you know what I mean. And well, what do you mean? All right. So, oh, my God, what if this leads to, to World War III? And, you know, you start looking on you Google World War III, nuclear arms. How would this happen? What would this look like in the United States if this really happened? What? No, don't do it. Stop looking for evidence that supports your biggest fear. You know, oh, my God, I'm afraid that, you know, and I'm not going to go into detail, but I, I have my own fears, you know, and I'm sure you have yours. Here's the thing. I'm a life coach, so I hear them all day long, and Tuesdays are my coaching days, so I've heard everything today, okay? It's like, you know, you are going in for your mammogram, and your biggest fear is that they're going to find a lump, and you're going to get breast cancer, and it's going to be stage four, but, you know, it's not, and it won't be, and you can, you can handle whatever is thrown at you to some degree, and, and so I ask you to not go looking for evidence to support your worst fears about the final outcome of what's happening in Ukraine and how it could affect you. And, and that sounds so selfish. And, and it's, but it's not. It's, it's, it's how people like us who overthink everything think. It's like, what's, what's the worst thing? That was a worst case scenario, right? What's the worst thing that could happen? And how's that? And as you say, how's it going to affect me? And am I going to be able to handle it? And nobody knows what's going to happen. And I would say, you know, the likelihood of a nuclear war, world war, isn't probably likely. And uh, I'm not a politician. I could tell you what I think is going to happen. I don't know if you want to hear it. And I'm probably not right anyway. <laughs> but the, the bottom, and it's not that bad. Uh, it's, not, it's not good, but it's not nuclear war. I mean, um, I don't know, I might as well tell you what I think. I could be wrong and it doesn't matter whether you agree, but I, I think that, I think Putin overestimated a lot of things. I'm not going to go into detail here. And I think it's getting uglier and uglier on his side of the fence and he's going to have to get out of it. And um, hopefully the you know, leaders of the world will come together and find a way to bring him out of it that saves face because um, I just don't think Ukraine's going to give up. And so what, what, what does he have to gain, except a lot of people that just don't want to hang out with him, be with him, or spend time with him, or have anything to do with him. And, and I could be completely wrong. Um, I just think that at some point, they're going to have to come together and find a way to bring him out of this and save face. And, and Ukraine can hopefully rebuild its, its country with all, all of everyone's help. That'd be the, that would be a good scenario, hopefully. But who knows? I don't know. Um, I... I think what you need to do right now is have a daily routine of things that you can do to stay grounded. And, and you know, say, don't watch the news. I, th I think you need to be informed. I think that you, you can watch the news, but only watch it for a certain amount of time. So let's go back to avoid hunting for evidence that support your biggest fear. Because I know how you think. And I know that you think like me, what's the worst thing that can happen? Don't go there. Don't go looking for evidence of the worst case scenario. And then take a break from reading and looking at all this conflict. And some, I know people who actually go back and forth from CNN to Fox to whatever, and they just want to see all the different opinions, but nobody really knows what's going on in Putin's head. And I'm really not sure he knows what's going on in his head. But the thing that we do know is that this is really ugly and it's hor horrifying. And, uh, and it's, it's kind of got us all by the throat right now. And so please don't look for evidence to support your worst fear and take a break um, from watching this news constantly. If you want to watch a little bit of it in the morning to catch up, fine. You don't have to watch. I think sometimes we feel that if we watch the news, we're doing something. No, you're not doing anything. And you think then you can maybe predict what's going to happen. No, you can't. I guarantee you, none of you know what's going to happen because none of us know. 
Um, and then the other thing you want to do is, believe it or not, and this is really important, try to embrace the mundane things in your life right now, as simple as that sounds. Embrace the simplicity. Like, you know, I go babysit my grandson twice a week. I go over there and I let everything go. I turn off my phone. I don't watch the news. And I'm in the moment with Fox walking down the street with the Fox babies, you know, pushing the stroller and, you know, singing little songs. He doesn't know anything about war. He doesn't need to know about war at 22 months old. Um, so the mundane, you know, taking your dog for a walk, sitting with your 14 year old to do homework, um, going out with your girlfriend for a glass of wine, um, anything that's simple, embrace the mundane, maintain good sleep, which is so hard. And we talked about this last week, but, and there are things you can do to sleep. One thing is don't eat any sweets or any chocolate before bed. Don't drink caffeine before bed. Um, you know, don't, if, if you want to have a glass of wine, that's okay. Or a beer, but don't, don't do a bottle of wine. Don't do a six pack of beer. You know, all this. Um, and the other thing that's so important right now is I cannot stress this enough. If you could just get out and walk every day or get on your treadmill and do cardio every day, it's going to help alleviate a lot of your anxiety. And again, your anxiety is normal. Your anxiety is so relevant. You know, we talk about internal anxiety and external anxiety. Well, this is real anxiety. That's for a real reason. You know, there is a war going on with very innocent people and it's, and it's affecting all of us and, and it's affecting all of us. And I can't even, I mean, I know we're, some of us are sitting here going, oh my God, you know, the stock market's tanking and, um, you know, the gas prices are at $6 a gallon and for truckers or people who have, you know, drive for a living, it's, it's, it's really difficult and inflation's up it's higher than it's been in years. And, you know, um, and the supply chain is, is, is really affecting a lot of people's businesses. We could go on and on and on. Um, but the truth of the matter is, are you, are you healthy? Do you have people who love you? Do you have a, a roof over your head? Um, can you buy food at the store? Um, do you have people to go spend time with tonight? I just texted my son, Sammy and said, Hey, let me take you for sushi after the Zoom call. To me, that's happiness, you know? And so take care of yourself, maintain good sleep habits, get out and do your cardio and eat properly. Don't go out and eat, although it's tempting right now. Okay, I have to tell you, I, I'm guilty, okay? Actually, I, I've done really good today. I have um, organic grape stuff, grape leaves and I've eaten those. I, I love this stuff just, so you guys know, it's not cheap, but you ever notice how bottled water all tastes differently? So um, this smart water is so good. Sometimes I wonder, what are they putting in these waters? I'm gonna have to read labels because, you know, arrowhead water tastes different than smart water and bo some bottled waters just can't taste salty, but this smart water, if you've never had it, it's so good and so refreshing. I tried to drink two of these a day and, and then I had grape leaves and I eat oatmeal for breakfast. So. I try to eat properly because the bottom line is you are what you eat. And if you uh, potassium and other electrolytes, <laughs> thanks, Ray. Um, you know, you are what you eat and you are what you drink. And if you're looking at yourself lately and saying, oh my God, I have bags under my eyes. I don't look good. I don't have any energy. Well, maybe it's your diet and maybe it's too much wine. And maybe it's the depression from this, this whole thing going on in Ukraine. But what you, you can't control that, okay? But you can control drinking a lot of water and you can control what you're putting in your body. So hydrate and eat properly, even if you don't feel like it. You know, and if you don't believe me, test it. Get up some morning and eat a bag of peanut m and my favorite, <laughs> and see how shitty you feel all day. You'll feel hyper and stressed or have three cups of coffee in the morning and you will feel like shit. So please eat healthy right now. So eat vegetables and eat protein and eat steak and fish and stay away from sugar, stay away from sugar, stay away from caffeine, stay away from iced tea, um, drink, drink a lot of water. Don't rationalize your worry. Um, and, and what do I mean by that? Don't say to yourself, I shouldn't, I shouldn't be worried right now. I can't do anything about it. I, I'm feeling panicky. I shouldn't be panicking. I, I, in other words, it's okay 
to worry. It's okay right now to feel like you're not in control of what's going on. You're not. Um, this is what I call, you know, this is rational worry. It's, it's like, it's, it's okay if you don't feel like yourself. It's okay if you're out of sorts. People are just like, I'm kind of scattered. I, I, I feel like I need to make a plan. I, I was going to move, but now I don't know. I was going to break up with this person, but now I just don't know what I want to do. And, and, if, and if you've lost a loved one, and I'm not sure if she's on here right now, but one of my clients just lost her husband. I don't see her on here right now. And she's so lonely and so devastated. And, and she feels like, oh my God, I'm going through this all alone. And, and she is, she's, except she's not, she's got a daughter and two sons and friends. And it's really important during this, this tragedy and this, this horrific um, experience that we're, we're, we're going through as a, as a world that you surround yourself with support, so someone to talk to, someone to talk it through to, but be very careful that you're not hanging out with people who are you know, filling you full of scary thoughts about what could happen because you don't probably need that right now. It's okay for you to rationalize and say, hey, look, I'm really informed and here's what I think is going to happen. And even if you're that informed, be careful what you share with people because you might scare them. And you be careful what you take in because you don't want to scare yourself. And, you know, and, you know, your kids may not really get it. You may have a 30-year-old or a 22-year-old and they don't really get what's going on right now. So to go and talk to your 19 year old about the possibility of nuclear war, you know, it makes no sense. He or she isn't going to get it. They don't want to hear it. And that's OK. Um, and if they do want to hear it and they want to get it, that's OK, too. You know, you may have one of those. Um, so the other thing I would highly recommend is and this is so important is really check your breathing. Because are you a laborious breather? Are you doing anxious breathing right now? Are you doing a lot of sighing? How do you know if you're having a lot of anxiety? Are you doing a lot of, <sighs> are you yawning a lot? <sighs> because if you're not really good at expressing your anxiety, sometimes just over sighing, which is just, <sighs> that's a sign of anxiety or over yawning is a sign of anxiety. So if you're not breathing properly and you don't take time to pace your breathing, maybe do some breath work, then you might find that you are a laborious, anxious breather and that you're exhausting yourself by not breathing properly. So that's another thing I want you to do is really work, you know, download that Jennifer Brazen radio. And, and Darla can send you some intentions that we put together for those of you that want to do some self-breathing and, and, and set your intentions to, and I have some intentions, by the way, that I wrote that I'm going to share with you tonight, if I can find them. Here they are. Yay. Um, so we're going to, we're going to do some intentions tonight and I'm going to ask Starla to, to put them down so that if you guys want a copy of them, we can send them to you so that you can use them when you listen to Jennifer Braz and radio and try to calm yourself down. And then the other time I, the other thing I'd really like you to do right now is spend time outside, spend time in nature, get out, take your dog, go for a walk. Walk down to the lake, you know, walk out in the snow, breathe the fresh air, get out of the house or the apartment and, and get back into nature. And you're like, why? Because I, I just went out the other day. My fiance lives somewhere where the morning sun comes out on his back deck and I don't get that sun. And I went out there and I just sat out there. And oh, my God, it was I could hear the birds and I could feel the morning sun on my face and. I just sat there and I said, thank you, God, for my family and that everybody's OK and that I just went through my colonoscopy and I came out fine. And, you know, that that I have a home and that I can help people and please guide me to help people in a really positive way. And just being out there and smelling the air and feeling the sunshine on my face just did wonders for me. So get out and spend time in nature. And then help where you can. Um, any small act of kindness, like I said. And by the way, help where you can in Ukraine. Ukraine, send money. Go online, Google, find some kind of organization that's affiliated with what's going on in the war and, and, and send money to that organization. Uh, but you can also help in a different way. 
you could go knock on the door of an elderly neighbor and they're sitting there scared and by themselves. And so find a way to share a small act of kindness with someone, even if it's just sending someone a text, letting someone know you love love them, um, going over and taking someone, you know, a cheeseburger from McDonald's, whatever you want to do, baking someone some cookies, um, going over and reassuring someone that, you know, an elderly person that might be by themselves, hey, we're going to get through this, you know, this will eventually, you know, transition, and we will get through it. I don't know what it's going to look like. You don't know what it's going to look like. But you know, reassurance makes everybody feel better, especially if it's sincere. Like I'm not trying to tell you, I know what's going to happen. But I can tell you, we will eventually move through this. And, and we've been through similar things as a world, and we and a country. And it's horrific, but we will move through this. And we, we have to be there in strength for our children and their children. And I have to be there for you. And so and my, my job is to share what I can with you so you can share it with someone else. So promise me that that's what you'll do. And then talk to people. I, oh my God, I mean, um, I can't say enough about that. I'm a talker. And, and I've got some clients right now who are struggling with some pretty severe stuff. And one of my, the things I always suggest is talk, 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 wherever you got to go. If it's your hairdresser or you've got a masseuse that comes in, you can talk to them or your best girlfriend that you talk to on the phone, or maybe it's your sister that pisses you off half the time, but sometimes she's a good listener. Or maybe it's your mom. It was always for me. I'd call my mom and I'd say, what are you doing? And she'd say, oh, I'm looking at the birds in the apple tree and I'm looking at flowers are starting to bloom. And I'd be like, God, I love to talk to my mother because she's so grounded and she always brings me back to reality. So talk to someone. Don't sit there by yourself, obsessed with watching the news, scaring the crap out of yourself. Get up, make a phone call, go get a friend, go for a walk, go have an ice cream, talk to someone. And then give yourself permission, and this is so important, to decompress. Um, If you've watched the news and you've done everything you can, to support Ukraine or you, you've done something to offer your help, you know, what, whatever it is, go online, then close your eyes sometimes in some space, let yourself do the breath work, imagine yourself somewhere peaceful and beautiful and allow yourself to decompress, whatever that means to you. Maybe it's a trip to the mountains, maybe it's a trip to the beach, maybe you are fortunate enough to live by a lake and you can go walk. Maybe you have a um, a yoga class at the YMCA or a gym down the street that you could join, please understand the importance of decompression. And what is decompression? It's when you step out of reality and you turn the TV off and you don't let anybody come in at you with negative stuff and you go into a peaceful place and you allow yourself to have a moment of peace and calm because you're no good to your children or your wife or your partner or anyone else, if you're angry and you're pissed and you're anxious and you're frustrated, it's not a way to pay your bills. It's not a way to drive a car. It's not a way to have a date. It's not a way to be a dad. It's not a way to be a mom. And, and so decompress, De- it's okay. So I, I wanted to share all of that with you. I hope you remember some of it. <laughs> I should start writing some of these down and putting them up online so you guys can go in and get them. But Meanwhile, that said, um, I want you to know that I'm here and, and if you do feel the need to connect, um, Darla is here for you as always, and you can call her at 419-350-7499, and she will talk to you and it, she will set you up for a call with me. If you want to maybe do some coaching, uh, I'm available for that. We also are going to start a group. We haven't done that yet. So that's very affordable. I burned myself on the curling line. Ah. <laughs> anyway, uh, so if you want to do coaching, I'm here and I, I can help you kind of rationalize what you're, what you're going through. And so please feel free to call Darla. And there's the number up, up on the screen, 419-350-7499. And we would love for, to, for you to reach out to us. And again, I'm Lucinda Bassett. I'm a self-help guru, whatever that means. 
and I've written books on anxiety and depression. And um, I've helped over a million people overcome problems with anxiety and depression. I created a program called Attacking Anxiety and Depression. I don't own it. I sold it a long time ago um, in, an, in a needy you know, period of my life. Uh, after my husband died, I regret it. But however, you can still buy the program on um, Amazon and it's fabulous and I created it. And we're trying to create a new program. Darla and I and a couple of her, uh, her, her daughter and some other great people, Darla's a psychologist. And um, we are gonna try to make that happen this year, a whole new program. So we're really excited about that. Meanwhile, follow me on Instagram and Facebook. Let Go With Lucinda is the podcast. It's on every podcast platform. And if you've missed some of these Zoom calls, go on YouTube, Lucinda Bassett Zoom, and all these Zoom calls are on YouTube. I'm so glad you all joined me tonight and keep Ukraine in your hearts and take a moment and say a prayer and hold space right here in your heart chakra for those people. And I will see you in two weeks and hopefully something positive will happen in the next couple of weeks that will turn things around. And if we all continue to pray together, at least we're sending the right energy the right direction, okay? All right, you guys, God bless you all. Take care of your families and stay grateful.